Okay, let's discuss different types of vibrato. Um, first of all, I want to break down uh, again. You know, there's lots of uh, definitions, and I want to talk about them. There's there's something called a wobble. Let's let's talk about that first, because uh, it usually stems from what's called a diaphragmatic vibrato. So when we uh, when we uh, try to use our diaphragm and have that be the only mechanism that drives your vibrato, uh, there's a tendency to go wobble. Right? It's this big warble, wobble they call it, and it's this giant vibrato that. You know, some people have. Um, I'm not going to ridicule them for it, but do I think that that is a, a resting place or the final resting place, again, of a well-supported, well-placed, clear tone, whole note that relaxes into vibrato? So when I said that uh, it's true and false, vibrato is something that can be learned and isn't something that can be learned, um, we don't learn it that way. We learn it by relaxing the vocal folds into the final stage of placing or planting a note or placing a, a, a well-placed note uh, into a relaxed state that, that where it oscillates, okay? Now let's talk about oscillation because, again, this is another sort of misunderstood thing. Oscillation, uh, uh, again, if what I'm saying is true, right, that it's the last final release valve to relax into a sound, to relax the voice so it can sustain a note, and by the way, uh, some more misinformation, um, it's much easier to relax into a state of vibrato and hold a whole tone than it is to hold a single note without vibrato. Okay, so it's harder to hold a note without vibrato than it is with vibrato. Now, vibrato comes with something called increased resonance. So within vibrato, um, what happens is, is as it begins to oscillate, uh, the sound gets larger. And so resonance takes over and the sound gets bigger with even less pressure uh, and, and you know good support, but actually less pressure in the throat and, and so forth. And by the way, I'm not going to get into a bunch of technical terms. I have a 10-page essay on my website. The point of this isn't to show tribal knowledge of how cool I am and all the great technical terms I can use. To me, that's just not my style. If you want technical terms, I wrote a 10-page essay that's quite technical. Go to the website, read it. Uh, for all you technical buffs out there, I think you'll find it uh, what you're looking for. For my purpose here, I want to keep it simple so that you can understand it, we can grow together, and we can do this together, step by step. So, we talked about a wobble or a warble, and that is a very wide vibrato that's usually diaphragmatically driven. Um, there's actually something else that's called a tremolo. Now, um, now tremolo is kind of interesting because there's lots of singers that have tremolos. Um, Stevie Nicks for one, you know, you'll be standing in a light, right? And, and, a, and again, a, tr a tremolo, uh, I don't want to... Um, I'm not begging on Stevie Nicks because there's lots of people that do this. In fact, Ella Fitzgerald and, 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 and um, Billie Holiday and lots of famous people have a fast vibrato. But um, anyway, it, um, it's called caprino, which means um, little goat. So capro, goat, or caprino, little goat um, in Italian. And I'll refer to a lot of bel canto phrases because I am a big fan of bel canto. I've studied it for 30 years from, again, some really cool people, um, but there's some things that I don't believe in, in, uh, in uh, them being the only gatekeepers of, um, you know, different terminology and things like that, and what can be learned or what should be learned only in their context, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, and it has to do with oscuro sounds or darker sounds or sounds that uh, can only be, um, uh, you know, again, what are called correct vowel or proper vowel sounds. Uh, I believe they need to be modified for pop, and we need to figure out different ways of doing things. Um, and they don't believe in any type of hyper, type of hyper uh, compressed sound at all. And I like to compress sound a lot. So we'll get into that uh, on, on uh, when I do an advanced uh, thing on hyperglottal compression, which is coming up. But getting back to my brother, um, so so we have these different types. So we've got the the, the, the wobble or the warble. We have the tremolo. Uh, we have the natural vibrato that we just discussed. Uh, and we have um, again the uh, caprino. Now caprino is kind of funny because. Um, there's a lot of cool people that use it. Let me give you an example, like Manhattan Transfer, for, for example, you know. You know, it's kind of a fast, you know, sexy, sort of jazzy kind of thing. It's like a horn stab, right? Now, is that a vibrato that is going to create a relaxed state? Answer, no. It's for effect. People use it for effect. So, vibrato, in a lot of cases, a lot of people will emulate their favorite singer and try to sound like their vibrato. Well, everyone has their own unique vibrato. It's kind of the fingerprint, if you will, on the final resting place of, of again, a well-placed, well-supported, clear-tone whole note that's being hummed. 
All right, with that said, then let's talk about within the context of that, how that oscillation takes place. Now, we have our chords. I'm not going to get into a bunch of technical stuff again. I'm just going to give you a quick brief thing so we can get into the actual vibrato part. The chords themselves are in a relaxed state. Now, you can oscillate in the chords. There will be a, a, a cycle rate or, or a beats per minute rate of how fast your vibrato will, will oscillate or um, the rates, you know, beats per minute. Now, there's... If you, let, let's say we're looking at, at vibrato on a line, okay, and let's say the line, once it starts to warble, let's, let's say it warbles, uh, not warbles, but it oscillates, excuse me, uh, between the whole tone that it's resting on and either underneath a quarter, a half, in some cases a whole tone, or above the whole tone. So we get a, you know, have it go up like this, or we go, Now, why is this important? It's important because um, there's guys like Freddie Mercury, for example, that um, he oscillates above the whole tone. I'm not a fan of his vibrato. In fact, I don't really like it. Now, I love him as an artist, amazing talent, not bagging on Freddie, but for me, ideally, um, I don't believe that his vibrato was uh, a resting place for the voice. I believe it was contrived, um, I believe it was rehearsed, and it wasn't a relaxation response to a well-placed, well-supported, clear tone, whole note in the final release valve or relaxation of uh, where that note should sit. I'm going to demonstrate these as we go. So, all right, so here's, here's if vibrato is a line and you're listening to a vibrato which I believe should be in a relaxed state, it would stand to reason that vibrato would relax underneath the whole tone instead of going up to a whole tone because it's harder to go right, and almost an unnatural sounding to me, then to go, yeah, and relax underneath the whole tone, all right? Now, let's talk about the whole tone itself. How wide should the vibrato be? How fast should the vibrato be? Yeah! for me, uh, what I call a relaxed state of a perfect resting place for um, a whole tone. So, 